Okay, everybody, welcome to a Revit tutorial. This is Kelly. I am the Revit tutor. And I just wanted to go over something that was kind of bothering me. And uh, I had spent some time at one point in time in my life trying to find an answer to it. And I thought you might actually like the answer to it as well. So what we have here is uh, the Revit add shape handles to a loadable family. What does that mean? So these little grips right here are called shape handles. And so if you wanted to reshape shape those while you're inside of your project, you need to follow these steps in order to create this family. So what I'm gonna do is take you kind of through, the, through these steps and kind of give you the key to what makes this thing really work. Okay, so here we go. I got Revit 2020, so I'm just gonna go ahead and create my family first. We'll say new and, um, sorry, new here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a generic uh, wall based. So maybe I'm trying to create like a shelf or something, okay? So generic wall based is good, hit open. And it takes a second to load up. All right, so first thing it wants to do is it wants to give you a 3D view, the placement side, the left side, the reference level as well. And so we'll use each one of these. So we'll probably start here in the uh, level on the placement side and we'll start getting uh, putting in some reference planes, all right? So what I'm gonna do is create a reference plane here to control this side of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip that one about this axis. And then I'm gonna use another reference plane and that one is gonna be how deep that it's going to be. And then I'll put another one level later for the high end for the thickness, all right? So uh, we don't need to name any of these, we're okay with that. So let's go ahead now and uh, put in some dimensions here. So dimension that guy to that guy, and let's do the equals. And then we're gonna put this guy on and set it to be a parameter here later. Uh, let me do another set of dimensions here. So let's go here and uh, we're gonna use, uh, there's a reference plane here at the face of this wall. You can't see it because I got my thin lines on, but uh, if you tab, you can get it. You can kind of see those dashed lines kind of pop up for you, click. And there's that one, all right? So I told you I'd tell you the key. The key here is what type of dimension these guys are, all right? And then also these gotta be something other than um, in the is reference. It cannot be uh, blank. It's gotta have something, all right? So you can make them strong references, weak references, whatever. That makes no difference, as long as it has something, right? <laughs> Now, if you come into a family that already has these guys, that might help you out, but uh, I'm just gonna use this one here and make my own. All right, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna turn these into parameters. So let's go ahead and call this guy. It's gonna be called um, the length and say okay. And uh, this one here, we're gonna call this one the depth and instance, all right? So if you want grips, you want basically the dimension to be instanced, all right? If it doesn't have uh, instance, then you will not be able to um, resize them with grips in your plan view, all right? It also says that if you want them to have a, uh, a resizable um, in 3D, they would need reference uh, lines. So I'll try that one after we're done, okay? Well, let's just do this first. All right, so now I wanna create the extrusion. Um, this is gonna be my shelf. I'm just gonna make myself just a shape, whatever. And I'll use the reference planes and I'll lock them and let them do the driving on the sizes for me. And on this one, you just need a tab. You don't need to lock it to it. it it's gonna already assume that it is, but you wanna have it against it, okay? You don't have to lock that there. All right. So it'll grow always in this direction. You don't have to worry about it growing in the wrong direction. All right, if it does, then just lock it down and you'd be good to go. All right, there's also a uh, thickness on this guy. So let me just give this thing like a, maybe a half an inch thickness of my shelf. All right, and then it wants to set this guy all the way down to zero level. Let's just finish this real quick. And let's go to the placement side here and we can see that it's all the way at the bottom. That's fine. Um, you're gonna to have to extrude up to get it off the floor so that way you can put a thickness reference line in there. So go to create, put your reference line in here across, select that guy and just copy down another one. All right, and then we're just gonna lock those to it, all right? So here, lock that guy there. 
to that one and lock that guy there. All right, now we're going to need some more uh, dimensions. Now, this one right here is going to be used for our thickness. So if you plan on changing that at any other point in time, you can do that. So remember, if you want to change this thing on the fly by grabbing it and changing it by that way, you can do that. I'm not going to do that. I, I don't need to do that. I, I think my thickness is fine. If I need another thickness, I'll just create a type. All right. <clears throat> so there we go. All right, my thickness. And then now I want to control the elevation of it. By the way, this is not in, in here. Notice that we've got all of our parameters right here. There is a default elevation. This guy does function, so you don't really need to put that in there. Uh, it will work, okay? So on this guy, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some nicer numbers in here. Whoops, 15 feet is aggressive. Let's go 15 um, inches. And its default length, let's just say it's three feet, okay? And then um, the thickness, we'll leave it at, uh, I made it two inches because it was easier to work with um, when I was in this space, but actually you're not gonna have a two inch shelf. Typically it'll be somewhere around half inch, three quarters or quarter inch or something like that. Cause it's gotta support some weight, right? So say, okay. And you can see that that's functioning. It's doing what it's supposed to. I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, set this guy down because here, here's the deal. It thinks this is your zero if I leave it up here, all right? So I wanna move this guy down all the way to the level. So it is extruding past the bottom of the level, all right? Now what I wanna do is I can take a look at this guy in 3D right here. And um, if I put in some default elevation here, like five feet, click apply. Uh, it does not do anything here in this view. However, it will react when you are uh, in the project, okay? So now that I got that, let's go ahead and uh, save us this family. Save and uh, we'll just browse somewhere. Uh, let me see, I've got a, my own folder here. Uh, here, families. And I've got one already right here uh, that I've done. Uh, I'll just call this one shelf new, save it. All right, I could use this load into project and close, but I don't have any other projects to load this in. So I need to go ahead and I'm gonna close out some of these other views. That way I can tell the difference between my project and these other ones really quickly. So just go to say new project and architecture is good, okay. We'll build up some walls really fast. Uh, connected height, uh, two, it's fine. Just gonna simulate our pantry here. Maybe it's, uh, or maybe it's a closet, okay? Let's just say this thing's a closet. Uh, well, closets typically have coat hangers in it. So yeah, let's just say this is a pantry, okay? So we'll do 10 feet by maybe uh, eight feet. I put a door on it for everybody to kind of get that uh, feel of how this is going to go. All right, now I want to place my shelves in here. So now that I'm over here and I have a project, I can go ahead and load it into the project. It knows that I'm, I've got one. Now this thing is a wall base, so it's looking for a wall of some sort in order to put this in. So if I click now, we're not going to be able to see that it, it went in, right? So what I need to do is I need to go to a 3D view. And I will just hover over the wall I want, and that wall, and uh, that wall is good for me. Maybe that wall too. I don't really particularly care about the level that I put it in on. Actually, I'm sorry, it did place it, but it was below our cut plane, and that's why it didn't appear because its elevation was set to a negative half inch below zero. All right, so let's delete that guy out. All right, so now that we got these guys right here. Head back up to our level one. We can see those guys are, are working out. And I can't use my trim command here to you know join these together. Uh, but what I can do is notice now I have these grips. And the grips are in the directions that I want them to be in. All right, I could grab them and pull them and, and get them to where I want to go. I found that the align works really well. So like this. And that did not work as planned. So something is going on here where that should be stretching, not pulling like that. So let's have a look at the family. Edit it, go up here and plan, and take a look. 
I pull it, it is equally moving. Hmm. It is instanced. Let's go ahead and make these both strong references. Load them back in. Yes, I do want to save my changes. Do I want to uh, replace the existing? Yes, I do. And overwrite the, the version and its parameter values. All right. So if I align now, aha, that's what it was. So the planes need to be strong references in order to allow it to stretch out like that. Notice it maintains that center, so that's kind of great. All right, so go here like that, and go here like that, that, and just aligning works really well. All right, now I want these guys all to be at the same level, so I just select each one of them by holding control. And elevation, we'll say they're all at five. It was blank because they're all different. And the Revit only shows you one at a time, all right? So I can make them look continuous as well by using the join. And this join is working like this, and the reason for it is that they are of the same material, which is default right now. Okay, so there you have it. Um, they are there. Now, remember we talked about uh, if we wanted to have this guy uh, give you grips in the 3D. So what I understand is that if you want to do that, you have to go and place reference lines, which are these guys here, all right? So what I'm gonna do is just drop that one in, drop, that one in, drop one in like this, and I'm gonna align those to the current uh, reference planes and see if that works out. Kind of looks like it may or may not. Let me undo that action there because I didn't see the, let me bump that scale up a little bit so I can read it a little bit better. Okay, align. Yeah, that's the padlock I was looking for. There we are. Okay, so I've got all those in, and so let's save it and replace the existing and overwrite. So here's the magic question. Ah, didn't work. Okay, so um, I'll leave that for another uh, tutorial on how to put the grips in in 3D, okay? So hope you like that. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line, okay?